So you want to change history. A few pro tips. There is an old saying, may you live in interesting times. I consider myself a student of history. A lot of amazing and interesting things have taken place since our civilization began. But I can honestly say that I have never seen a year like the one we are in now. It appears that every month, the rules to this giant game are being altered, and all the players have been on their heels ever since 2020 began. Our unbroken history goes back about 5,000 years, give or take. It doesn't seem like much in the grand scheme of things, especially when scientists start throwing out ideas like the Earth being billions of years old. We have, however, accomplished a great deal. It just comes down to perspective. Years ago, comedian Stephen Wright gave an interesting take on the relative size of things. He said, it's a small world, but I wouldn't want to paint it. You don't fully understand the concept until you drive out west into an open area and then don't see a house for an hour. This world is a very large place, actually, but we keep saying that we're making it smaller through faster air travel and integrated communication. It's a small world after all, until you run out of gas on a back road in Kansas. Not so small then, is it? History as we know it is just a series of very long chains, each link filled with events that interact and continue. There have been wonderful programs that have delved into this, the most comprehensive being the UK series Connections. What it showed was how fragile the chains of history really are. Even changing one small aspect can create ripples that alter a bigger course dramatically. Turn the wheel of the Titanic just one degree an hour earlier, and thousands of people make it to New York without incident. It seems like an obvious choice, and you might make it. Save the Titanic and erase the legend. Not so fast. Have you done your research? Have you thought about what you might be setting in motion? Or even if you could stop it? A deeper look into the Titanic hints at a British conspiracy one that started with the sister ship Olympic. How it was involved in a fender bender with a British military vessel. But the British Navy refused to pay for the damages. So the owners of the Olympic did a quick repair, then swapped names with the Titanic, sending her out with the full intention of scuttling the ship, but with no loss of life. It was just a case of simple insurance fraud. They had a large rescue vessel within visual range, but they bailed, like a nervous getaway driver during a bank robbery. And as the Titanic went down, there was no place for the passengers to go, and not nearly enough lifeboats. If you went back in time and changed the ship's course, the captain would have just changed it back. It was always going to hit the ice. That was the plan. If you want to change something, you needed to stop the Olympic from hitting the Navy ship. You need to do your homework and make the better choice. We've all thought about making choices like this. Maybe not on a scope of, say, going back in time to kill Hitler, but certainly in our own lives. We question various paths that we choose and often wonder what would have happened had we taken the other road. Who did we marry? How many kids did we have? Our profession? What company in that profession? And it goes on like that. We second-guess ourselves constantly, have regret if we choose something that inflicts pain on ourselves and others, and breathe a sigh of relief when the alternative that proves disastrous fills our rearview mirror. I've done this many times over the years with my own life, wondering what could have been, what might have been. Did I make the optimum decision? Did I get the most out of this life? What I learned years later, and it took decades, was that sometimes chains of events aren't shiny or pretty, but necessary to keep the bigger picture intact. 
Sometimes the ends justify the means. It took a long time for me to fully appreciate that quote. I had just turned 17 when I attended my first university. I went because a bunch of other guys from my class wanted to. It was easier back then. College was cheap. And it was mostly about having fun, which I did. I drank my way through the first year, accomplished nothing, and went to a different school the next year. At the new school, I started an illegal fireworks company, got busted by the ATF, taught computers, won a world pinball tournament, got hired by a publisher in Colorado, then finally got into Flat Earth, which eventually brought me here to this broadcast. Let's say, though, that I don't follow my friends and choose a different university. I never build fireworks, don't get caught, don't focus on computers, never play the tournament, never go to Colorado, and maybe, just maybe, I lose my interest in conspiracies and join back into the ranks of the sheep that graze all around you. For me, Flat Earth becomes just a curiosity, and all the cool things and wonderful people I've met evaporate. Even this broadcast echoes into nothingness. Decades had to pass and events had to unfold before I fully understood. The journey has to run its course so that the story can be complete. Why is this important? Because right now people are trying to change not just the course of future history, but all history. Tearing down statues of old politicians is, of course, only symbolic and won't change policy. But I hear whispers in forums about how much better they could make the world. Some stating that the U.S. and the black community would have been far better off if slavery would have never existed in America. Sounds more than reasonable. Slavery is bad. Sentient beings should never be considered property. It has no place in any civilized society. I like to put ideas like that into a wish machine. It's like a genie, but more mechanical. No smoke or voiceover by Robin Williams. The idea is simple. The machine gives you three wishes only. Wishing for wishes doesn't apply here. For argument's sake, we're not going to go through all the obvious wishes like money, superpowers, or immortality. These are going to be for the benefit of mankind only. If you had three wishes that could only be used for the advancement of the world people, what would you choose? Some would choose a cure for cancer, others would remove poverty, war, etc. Eventually, someone is going to make the broad wish of removing slavery from the United States. From a surface level, it sounds like a noble choice and removes the suffering and death of possibly millions of black Americans. However, the choice, like all choices, has a cost that goes with it. In this case, practically destroying all modern black culture as we know it. Let's expand on that. You make your wish and the colonies don't hire companies to bring 300,000 Africans to the United States for slave labor. The population doesn't increase from there, and black Americans never reach a 13% stake in the demographics. What effect does that have? Frederick Douglass doesn't pave the way for black rights. Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Louis Farrakhan, they aren't here to lead anyone. American athletics suffer greatly. Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson, George Foreman, Sugar Ray Leonard, just about every power boxer in every weight class, gone. Look at baseball with their power hitters. Hank Aaron, Reggie Jackson, Barry Bonds, Dave Winfield, just to name a few. Basketball with LeBron James, Michael Jordan, Wilt Chamberlain, Magic Johnson. You know what, the basketball list is so long, let's just say almost all of the great players in the NBA. Same goes for the NFL. Just about every great running back and wide receiver came from black America. The game is very different without them. The Williams sisters made tennis far more interesting. Tiger Woods accounted for half of the TV ratings in professional golf. Backtracking just a bit, 
When Michael Jordan retired the first time from basketball, TV ratings went down almost 30%. That's why they begged him to come back. And of course, track and field, which black Americans own outright and have ever since Jesse Owens set the bar back in the 1930s. But the five aspects of the arts, that being pictures, sculptures, music, dance, and literature, they suffer the most. Let's just rattle off a partial list of my favorites. Duke Ellington, Aretha Franklin, Jimi Hendrix, All of the Jacksons, Stevie Wonder, The Rise and Fall of Bill Cosby, Prince, Richard Pryor, Sidney Poitier, Oprah Winfrey, Denzel Washington, Morgan Freeman, Eddie Murphy, Whoopi Goldberg, Will Smith, Pam Greer, Halle Berry, Whitney Houston, Beyonce, every major rap group in history, and that includes the Beastie Boys because they didn't create rap, they merely followed the black pioneers. Wait, it wasn't just rap, all jazz, rhythm and blues, Christian gospel, hell, Rock and roll doesn't even exist without black artists like Little Richard, Ray Charles, and Chuck Berry. They influenced Elvis, not the other way around. Just about every major black artist since the 20th century not only influenced and enriched American culture, but the entire world after that. Why? It's simple. Because America makes people famous. If your talent or your skill resonates with the general public, we embrace it, we elevate it, and let it be heard everywhere. But none of those people and none of their works happened because you wished it all away. Because of your wish, black Americans never developed a population base in this country, and anyone coming from Africa had to apply for visas and citizenship like everyone else. Remember Nelson Mandela? Not now, because there aren't enough black people in America to spread the word. He becomes just another man referenced in UN speeches. United States interaction with Africa is then diminished. The tribal wars continue as normal, and in 2020, nothing has changed. Wakanda was just a dream, after all, created in the Black Panther comic book series. A comic book that was, by the way, developed in America because of black culture. See what I'm doing here? Would you still make that wish, knowing what would be lost? Or did the end result justify the hero's journey? I think it did. But then again, I'm a fan of Run DMC, and I know that I talk too much. That's the name of a song. The Native Americans are in an even tougher boat. If you use a wish and stop the English from colonizing America, you would still have the French, or the Spanish, or whoever else figured out where the New World was. It was always going to happen. The people who built ships and guns were going to win. Why? The Indians built neither ships nor guns. So, before you start burning through your wishes with knee-jerk reactions that will save the world, consider what will change if you do. A single human life can affect many others, like Jimmy Stewart in its uh, wonderful life, or repeated alterations like the butterfly effect. Let me end with this. If you ever come across a genie, or in some cases, the devil who wants to make a trade. Don't rush to judgment. Don't let your emotions get the best of you. And always remember to be careful what you wish for.